Udah guys, udah ke-record kok. Oke. Okay. Kalau gua buka buku kelihatan enggak? Ini gua sekarang buka buku. Kelihatan enggak? Ya. Enggak. Sekarang oh, masih di PPT. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Bentar aku. Jadi kalau gua bisa tulisan. Tulisan, tulisan, tulisan. Gini. PPT gua gerak enggak kan? palanya? Gerak gerak ya, Zak. Lu gerak kok. Ini gua jadi interview. Kelihatan kelihatan Zak. Oke. Oke, okay, kalau gue gini nggak kelihatan kan? Enggak. Gue buka buku sekarang. Oke, okay, oke. Okay, nice. Enggak. Oke. Okay. Um, langsung aja ya kalau gitu. Iya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Kita udah grup satu kan? Oke, okay, iya, Ring. Um, okay. Hello everyone, we're from group one. And... Uh, where our group will be presenting about managing careers and retention. Our group consists of me, Elzan, and my teammates, Alia, Salman, Rifki, Balkis, and Rayana. So firstly, I'll be discussing about career management, in which in this learning, uh, in this chapter, the learning objective is to discuss what employers and supervisors can do to support employees' career development needs. To begin with, we must first identify key uh, components and key definitions of several words, starting from career, which is the occupational positions a person has had over many years. Finally, we must know that career management means the process of for enabling employees to better understand and develop their career skills and interests, and to use these skills and interests more effectively. Next, we need to differentiate the term career development and career planning, in which career development describes a lifelong series of activities that contribute to a person's career exploration, establishment, success, and fulfillment, while career planning is the deliberate process through which someone becomes aware of personal skills, interests, knowledge, motivations, and other characteristics, and establishes actions, plans to attain specific goals. So next, I will be discussing about the components of career management, in which career management has three char- main characters, uh, three main roles in which people could play, firstly being the manager, and later on we'll be discussed about the employers and the employee. Firstly, about the manager's role in career management, first is to provide timely and objective performance feedback, second is to offer developmental assignments and support, third, to have career development discussions with the employee, and lastly, they should act as a coach, appraiser, advisor, and mentor. What this means is that they listen to and clarify the employee's career plans, they give feedback, they generate career options, and lastly, they link the employee to organizational research resources and career options. On the second role, we have the employer's role in career management, where the employer should provide career-oriented training, development, and promotional opportunities, second, to offer career information and career programs, and give employees a variety of career options, and last, to be an experienced mentor who can help the person learn the ropes and to prevent real- reality shock. Um, what this means from reality shock, um, reality sh- shock refers to the results of a period that may occur at the initial career entry, when the new employee's high job expectation from the reality of a somewhat boring or otherwise unattractive work situation. And for the employer and the employer's career management methods, first we have the career planning workshop. Um, it's described as a planned learning event in which participants are expected to be actively involved in completing career planning exercises and inventories and participate in career skill practice sessions. Second example would be career coaches, where uh, they help employees create one to five year plans showing where their career the firm may lead. And then the employer and the employee base the latter's development plans on what he or she will need to move up. Uh, these are just two main career management methods, and um, companies are free to explore what um, new ideas and innovative measures that they can um, think of. And here is an example of an, the employee career development plan. It looks somewhat like this, or they could use this as a basis. And the last role among the three is the employee's role in career management where the employee's role is to shoulder responsibility for his or her own career, as it's not the job of the managers or the employer to begin with. Um, and they assess interests, skills, and values, and they seek out career information resources. And lastly, and in my point, in, and in my opinion, the most important is to take those steps that must be taken to ensure a happy and fulfilling career. 
Okay, now for the continuation of Ilzan explanation, now I'm going to explain about the learning objective too. It's an uh, employee engagement guide for managers, so it is about explain why career development can improve employee engagement. Next slide, please. Thank you. First, for the career management, when you engage employees by focusing on their career development, the business benefits in a variety of ways may include, number one, Employees stay with an organization because they are engaged and they are developing their careers and are more likely to perform at a higher level. Number two, institutional knowledge increases and can be shared among employees. Number three, a culture focused on development and growth ultimately enhances the ability for your business to perform well. So, by providing opportunities of, for employees to increase their knowledge, skills, and expertise, you demonstrate your commitment to your employees and in turn, this focus on their development positively impacts the employee self-esteem and heightens their commitment to the employer, which eventually leads to improved employee engagement. So uh, most of us want to enjoy our work and feel satisfied by the contributions that we make. And career development is one way for small businesses to enable their employees to contribute and increases their skills in a way that delivers personal, professional, and organizational results. And furthermore, identifying individual talents and providing career development opportunities for employees to further their abilities is a critical component in a strong talent management strategy to further their abilities and a focus on career development does wonders in engaging the current workforce while also recruiting and retaining future employees. When you empower and engage employees, you will find that your company may excel and reach heights you didn't think it's possible. Next slide, please, thank you. Now for the commitment-oriented career development efforts. So given the importance to most people of having a fulfilling and successful career, Career planning and development can play an important role in engagement. The employer's career development process should send the signal that the employer cares about the employee's career success. And as mentioned earlier, this doesn't necessarily have to be complicated. For example, the required performance appraisal can provide an easy opportunity to link the employee's performance, career interest, and developmental needs into a coherent career plan. With, ca with career-oriented appraisal, the supervisors and employee jointly merge the past performances, career preferences, and development needs into a formal career plan. And for the example for this effort is the JCPenney Management Career Grid approach that provides another good example of what is possible. So Penny's manager managerial performance appraisal form a contain a listing of all the Penny's management and sales jobs by title, function, and level the level that employees could conceivably want to consider. The company trained its supervisors to consider the employee's performance, career interest, and Penny's needs, and to develop a career plan, including the development activities uh, for the employees. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Yana, for your explanation. So now I'm going to continue about managing turnover and retention. Turnover itself is the rate to which employees leave the firm. In order to manage retention, there are several steps we need to do. So uh, the first thing to do is actually to measure the number of top performing employees who leave the workplace. Here is the formula to calculate the rate of turnover first we need the number of employees leaving the workplace during the period and then we divide it by the average number of employees during the period and we times it by a hundred the rate varies uh, between industries for example in the tourism industries is very high but in educational services is very low as 12 percent then after we know or we measure the number we need to also know what are the causes of uh, people voluntarily uh, turn over or leave the um, workplace. 
the top reasons of employees leaving the workplace is the first one is the pay. Some of them are dissatisfied or not satisfied with the pay they receive for their work. And then they leave the workplace because they see a better promotional opportunities uh, in another workplace. Uh, and then when they seek to work-life balance, they might leave the workplace. And then when they see a better career development in another place, they leave also their current workplace. And then the last or the most common or the most top uh, reason is actually for healthcare benefits. When employees see another workplace have uh, giving them more benefits in terms of healthcare, they tend to leave their current workplace and then uh, join the place that offers them more benefits. But uh, if we um, see, the main reason is actually the job dissatisfaction of employees. To know the reasons or to get the data or to define the problem, there are several ways. There are exit interview, attitude survey, stay interview, and anonymous hotlines. Uh, in anonymous hotlines, when we or the firms give hotlines for uh, employees to just uh, confess or chat or know what problems they have, but anonymously to the hotline. Then after we define the problem, we seek for ways or we retain them so that they don't leave the workplace. There are several approaches we can use to retain employees. The first one is to raise the pay because as we know, pay is one of the largest or one of the most common reason of employee leaving the workplace. So we, when we raise the pay, it is the tool to retain high performing employees because when the employees perform high, they may expect a higher pay as well. Then we need to hire smart. What does it mean by hire smart? Uh, because when we want to retain some employees, it needs to start in the selection or the recruitment process. So we need to hire the right employees so that we can retain them. And then uh, we can discuss careers with the employees because as I mentioned before that career development is one of the common reason of employees leaving the workplace. When we discuss careers with them, it helps them lay out careers so they can see that they have the opportunity to develop their careers in the current workplace so it will also retain employees. Then we can provide direction to the employees. So the employees can have a clear understanding of what are our expectations to the employees so they can perform well as well. And then the next one is to offer flexibility to the employees because when we offer flexibility, it keeps the employees encouraged. Now it's pretty common when we see workplace having a flex time, like uh, you don't require employees to start work at uh, 9 a.m., but they need to fulfill the nine or eight hours of work time, but they, there's no obligation for them to start at 9 a.m. and end the work at 5 p.m. Then we can also see employees doing telecommuting. That is actually also an example of flexibility that we can offer to the employees to keep them encouraged. And then we can also use high technological HR practices. And the last thing is to counter offer. Counter offer happens when an employees are planning to re, uh, to leave the workplace and then we made an offer to cancel them or to keep them working with us. A well, counter offer can uh, include like when we offer a pay raise or we give more benefits to the employees or things like that so that the employees are still interested to work with us. But we also need to specify on which employees are worth for, worth for it. Not all employees are worth for a counter offer. Mostly uh, only employees that I that are top performing that are work for the counter offer because when employees with low performance or when they are not really productive, it's not very problematical if they want to leave our workplace. So uh, maybe they are they are not really worth for the counter offer. After we retain them, we will also have another problem or which is job withdrawal. Job withdrawal is all actions that intended to place physical or psychological distance between the employees and the workplace. Uh, job withdrawal is very costly, so we need to understand what are the costs so we can minimize costs that 
is uh, an effect of the job with Lowell. Uh, the main thing or the core problem is actually because employees think that they need to get away or they need to step further away from things that they think can make them feel bad or have a negative effect for them. And they want to get closer to things that have positive effect from, for them. That is actually the job of your role. A very extreme example is absence and voluntary turnover. But things that might happen with job withdrawal is also like when employees take work breaks, but they don't deserve it, or when they neglect their work, it's also a form of job withdrawal. So that's all from me, and the next uh, material will be explained by my friend Salman. Thank you, Zaki, for the explanation. And now I am going to continue with explaining about uh, the employee life cycle career management, about how uh, an employee will start and will on go through the career path of, of being in a company and all aspects included inside it. Next. Uh, one of the first uh, aspects of uh, employee control is about managing promotions. Promotions itself refers to the advancements of employees to a position of increased responsibility. This is uh, because employees crave for promotions, uh, for higher pay, high responsibility, and of course, uh, more often than not, it's also job satisfaction. For employers, uh, promotions can also provide opportunities to reward exceptional performance and to fill open positions with tested and loyal employees. Uh, but despite all that, a uh, promotion process should be done with integrity since uh, unfairness and, or secrecy can paint or devalue the process itself. Next. In making a promotion decision, there are a lot of aspects at stake. And to put it simply, it could be wrapped up in these open-ended questions. Whether seniority or competence is a rule, how should we measure competence? Is the process gonna be formal or informal? Uh, is it gonna be top-down, bottom-up, vertical, horizontal, or others? This is due because with more employee employers downsizing, some promotion uh, may take the form of more challenging, but not necessarily higher ranked or better paid jobs. And this uh, can be an issue for employees as well. Next. Uh, other than uh, promotions, it is also important to maintain a diverse workforce because it represents uh, that a company is open to different perspectives and characteristics. Usually the sources of bias and discrimination comes from having few people of color employed, uh, and the old boy network of informal friendships, a lack of women mentors, a lack of higher visibility assignment or the glass ceiling, and also a lack of company role models for members of the same racial or ethnic group. And therefore, in order to promote diversity, uh, we can do uh, things such as follows, including eliminating institutional barriers, improving networking and mentoring, eliminating the glass ceiling, as well as instituting flexible schedules and career tracks. Next. And after all that, uh, there's also two more important aspects, which, is, which are transfers and assignments. Transfers are reassignments to similar positions. Many firms today boost productivity by consolidating positions because transfer itself is a way to give displaced employees a chance for another assignment or perhaps more personal growth. Employees is also benefited uh, as uh, it includes more personal enrichment and more interesting jobs. And retirements. Uh, retirements are the action 
or a fact of leaving one's job and ceasing to work. And uh, a company shall prepare what seems what what's considered to be a retirement plan, where it includes the explanation of social security benefits, pension, leisure time counseling, investments in finance counseling, health counseling, psych counseling, as well as counseling for second careers, either inside or outside of the company. Thank you. Uh, so next, we'll be discussing about managing this missile. Next, please. So this missile refers to involuntary termination of an employee's employment with the firm. So there are four bases for this missile. The first one is unsatisfactory performance. It refers to persistent failure to perform assigned duties or to meet prescribed standards on a job. Um, uh, the specific reasons uh, include excessive absenteeism, tardiness, a persistent failure to meet normal job requirements, or an adverse attitude. And then the second one is misconduct. So it is a willful violation of the employer's rules and may include stealing and rowdy behavior. And then um, the next one is lack of qualification for the job. So it refers to an employee's inability to do the assigned work, although he or she is diligent. And then the last one is change requirements of, of the job. So it is an employee's incapability of doing the job after the nature of the job has changed. Next, please. Insubordination. Um, so the definition of insubordination is a willful disregard or disobedience of the boss's authority or legitimate orders. Um, for example, is criticizing the boss in public. And uh, there are some examples of insubordination. It includes uh, direct disregard of the boss's authority, direct disobedience or refusal to obey the boss's order, particularly in, for, in front of others. And then uh, the liberate uh, defiance of clearly stated company policies, rules, regulation, and procedures. And then public criticism of the boss, blatant disregard of reasonable instructions, contentious uh, display of disrespect, disregard for the chain of command. And then the last one is participation in or leadership of an effort to undermine and remove the boss from power. Next. And then we will be discussing about uh, the fear safeguards. So dismissals are never easy. Therefore, the managers can take um, some steps to make uh, the dismissals fairer. <clears throat> so the first uh, step is to allow the employee to explain why he or she did what he did. And people who get full explanation of why and how termination decisions were made were more likely to perceive their layoff as fair and indicate that they did not wish to take the past employer to the court. And then uh, second, have a formal multi-step pro procedure, including warning and an appeal process. And then third, the person who actually does the dismissing is important. So employees and one study whose manager informed them of an impending layoff viewed the dismissals fairer than um, when the dismissals are told by, say, a human resource manage, manager. And then uh, last, dismissed employees who feel they've been treated unfairly financially are more likely to sue. So um, the picture here uh, summarizes the typical severance um, policies. Next. And then next, we should know uh, the employment law. So termination at will uh, force in the absence of a contract, either the employer or the employee can terminate at will with the employ employment relationship. And there are three main protections against wrongful discharge in the termination at will doc doctrine. So the first one is statutory exceptions. It includes federal and state equal employment and workplace laws that prohibit certain dismissal. And then second, um, common law exceptions. 
uh, the courts uh, could create these exceptions based on precedents and then less uh, public policy exceptions. Uh, uh, courts ha could have a discharge to be wrongful when it was against a well-established public policy. And then um, avoiding wrongful discharge suits. So where wrongful discharge or termination occurs when an employee's dismissal does not uh, comply with the law or with the contractual agreement arrangement stated or implied by the employer. So for example, uh, when an employee uh, wants to quit because they had no, no, no choice because the employer made the work situation uh, intolerable. Um, avoiding wrongful discharge suits requires several things. So the first, um, you should have employer policies, including grievance procedures that help show you treat employees fairly. And then second, uh, you should review and refine all employment related policies, procedures, and documents uh, to limit challenges. So these um, procedure, procedural steps include have applicants sign the employment application. You should make sure that it contains a statement that employee can terminate at any, any time. And then second, review your employee manual to delete statements that could undermine your defense in, an, in a wrongful discharge case. For example, uh, you could delete a sentence that said, um, employees can be terminated only for just cause. And then uh, have written rule listing infractions that may require discipline and discharge. Next. And if a rule is broken, uh, get the worker side of the story in front of witnesses and preferably get it signed. And then you should check, check out the story. And then be sure that the employees get a written appraisal at least annually to keep in track with the employee's performance. And if an employee shows evidence of incompetence, you could give that person a warning before, and you should also provide an opportunity to improve. And keep careful confidential records of all actions such as employee appraisals, warnings or notices, and so on. And then last, um, ask the questions in this picture uh, before making the dismissal final. And then um, the employees should also learn about the security measures. Uh, so it is suggested to use a, a checklist to ensure that dismissed employees return all key and company uh, property and often accompanying them out of the building. So the employer should disable internet related passwords and accounts of former employees, block holes that could allow an ex employee to gain illegal online and access and have rules to return of company laptops and handhelds. Next. Okay, the next one is, uh, thank you, Alia. The next one is supervisor liability. So supervisor liability, there are several ways to avoid having a personal liability becomes an issue. The first one is follow company policies and procedures. The second one, administer dis the dismissal in a manner that doesn't add to the employee's emotional hardship. The third one is don't act in anger. And the last one is use HR department for advice. Okay, so the next topic we'll be talking about is um, exit process and termination interview. Termination interview is an interview in which an employee is informed of the fact that he or she has been dismissed. The next one is outplacement counseling, which is a formal process by which a terminated person is trained and counseled in the techniques of self-appraisal and rescuing a new position. The last one is exit interview, which is an interview with employees who are leaving the firm, conducted for obtaining information about the job-related matters and to give the employer insight about the company. Next. Okay, so layoff and the plant closing law. Layoff is uh, an employer sending employees home due to a lack of work or is typically a temporary situation. Um, and then the next topic is adjusting to downsizing mergers. So downsizing is the process of reducing, usually dramatically, the number of people employed by a firm. The basic idea is to cut costs and raise uh, profitability. So downsizing requires careful considerations of uh, several matters. The first one is 
Making sure that the right people are let go, this require having an effective appraisal system in place. Second is compliance with all applicable laws. The third one is executing the dismissal in a manner that is just and fair. The fourth is security. And the fifth is reducing the remaining employees' uncertainty and addressing their concerns. So providing advance notice regarding the layoff can be help cushion the otherwise negative effects. So can interpersonal sensitivity layoff can be more challenging abroad due to special illegal obligations such as requirements for a year notice in some countries. That's all from us. Thank you very much.